Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 7 of Learn Lightroom 6, also called Lightroom CC. In this episode, we're going to talk about the split toning tab in the develop module of Lightroom. Now, real quick, I've been getting some emails from folks asking me why I haven't done this or why don't I do this and, and such and such. I'm going to be covering everything in the develop module. I, if I had one complaint about my Learn Lightroom 5 video series is that I tried to jam too much into one video. So we're doing these videos at a bit of a more leisurely pace. The next two videos though, you'll see me develop a bunch of different images and you'll really get an idea what my workflow is and all the different tricks that I use when I process an image. So those next two videos would be of a lot of interest I think to most of you. Now in this in, or this video as I mentioned we're doing split toning probably the least used tab I would say or you know in the develop module but it could be very powerful and you could get some interesting effects by it. Now this image here of these windmills is a raw image that hasn't been processed at all so I'm gonna start out in the basic tab and I'm just gonna do a quick um, process of the image. You'll get a peek at my workflow now. I'm just going to go very quickly. The sky itself, that usually, what I, well, usually what I'll do is if exposure is off, I will adjust the exposure slider first. Since this exposure is fine, I'm not worried about that. I then skip contrast. I prefer to use the tone curve to add contrast, and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, what I'll do first then is highlights and in this case I want to bring out a little more detail in the sky so I'm gonna push highlights down a little bit until I get a little more detail I kinda of just rock it around till I get it where I like it and I like it right about there so there's really no scientific way to do this it's just to your own personal taste eyeball the image and move the sliders to get them to where you like it now shadows I want to open them up a little bit and get a little more detail in the trees and bushes over here and maybe make them a little brighter so we're going to push shadows up a little bit to right about there now I skip whites and blacks I don't adjust those yet I jump down to clarity and I turn that up quite a bit now again you could do these sliders in any order that is comfortable for you this is just the way I prefer to do it next I will push vibrance up a little bit. I usually don't mess with satura saturation. Um, again, vibrance will increase the saturation of those uh, colors that aren't already saturated or near saturated, whereas saturation just increases everything, all colors, uh, and makes them more saturated. And vibrance, I think, um, is a little more realistic usually. So, that's what I do. Then I would uh, skip, I would uh, jump out of the basic panel momentarily. I go to the tone curve and I just add contrast with the tone curve and I usually go uh, to this little drop down and I check medium contrast then I check strong contrast and see which one I like better and I happen to like in this image strong contrast a little bit better. So I'm done with that. I jump back up in the basic panel because I still have to adjust whites and blacks. Now if you remember, I taught you two different ways to adjust whites and blacks. One is kind of a technical way where you hold the shift key in, double click on the word whites, double click on the word blacks, and you'll get a perfect white point and a perfect black point without any pixels being uh, clipping at all. None at all. Now, I don't prefer that way. I prefer the second method I showed you where I hold the alt or option key in and then I adjust the sliders. Now, actually, the way I adjust whites, I'd get the same exact result if I held the shift key in and double clicked. But this is the way I always do it. I hold the alter option key in, I click on the white slider first, and then I push it to the right until I get something bleeding through. Then I back it right off until nothing's bleeding through right around there. Now it says 43 I might have missed a little bit but if I hold the shift key in and do that other method it should be right around 43 and it's 42 so I was very close. So the way I do it I could adjust my whites much quicker if I was not so stubborn and I held the shift key in and double clicked on whites because that's the way I like my white point adjusted. Now the black point I do it my way uh, to my liking. 
I like to again hold that shift, that alt or option key. It's the alt key if you have a PC, option if you have a Mac. I hold that in. Then I go to the black slider, click down. This time the screen turns white, and I move to the left. Now already I'm getting stuff bleeding through. I would prefer to bring it even further. That's the way I like to adjust this. So right around there, and I let go. And to me, it adds more depth to the image. That's why I like to do it that way. Now that point where stuff was just starting to bleed through if I would have backed it off that would be the point if I held the shift key in and double clicked on blacks that gives you that kind of perfect black point where nothing is clipping alright so that's the way I like to do it now as far as this image is concerned I'm done with the basic panel I could come back and readjust stuff later but I'm done with it for now I did the tone curve I'm gonna jump right down to split toning now split toning uh, is as I mentioned not often used but it, you could get some really cool effects with it what it is you have these two different sections highlights and shadows and you could really tone your highlights one way and tone the shadows a different way so you could get these cool effects now in this image here I think I would like to give it a real cool look almost like maybe uh, it's evening look a dusk look to it so the way I would do it, I usually start with the highlight section and I take saturation and I move it all the way up. And I just move it all the way up so I could see what I'm doing. And you can see now everything that's a uh, highlight is kind of got this, you know, reddish tint to it. I'm going to go to the hue slider next and I'm going to move it to the right until I get to those cool tones I'm talking about. So I could go right deep into purples or I could stay back more towards this bluish teal you know so I'm gonna stay right maybe there give it kind of this bluish purple look um, you know that's fine start with the highlights there now I could go down to the shadows I'm gonna leave saturation high up here for now I'm gonna come back to it in a minute alright I'm gonna jump into set uh, shadows and I'm gonna turn saturation all the way up now you can see anything that's a shadow has that kind of rosy look to it now we're again we're gonna go to the hue slider and we're gonna push that until I get kind of this this kind of cool color and when I say cool I mean color temperature cool all right and you can just mess around with it to there now what I do is I would back off a little bit on each of the saturations until I get it to what I like and then if I think maybe you know I don't like a color like something's a little too purple something like that I would I would adjust you and go from there and that's the way I generally will do it when I want to get a certain look so I would just keep backing them off now there is another way to do it these little triangles or these little rectangles right here you could click on it and a little color picker a color picker uh, comes up and you can see our points are right there there's the highlights and there's the shadow point and you can see they're very close to each other but I have an eyedropper so I could pick a different point and obviously from left to right is the hue of the color up and down is the saturation you can see the saturation slider will move as I move up or down on the column and if you look closely you can just see it over here this saturation slider moves also it's it's the same thing so anyways so we could just click around too to get the look we're we're looking for so you know that's kinda of like the way most of us will adjust split toning now there is some types of effects you could get and I'm gonna to go to this image here and I've done this in the Lightroom 5 video uh, where I gave this kind of an older film look so I'm gonna do it in this video also now it's a JPEG so it really is already processed I am going to go to the tone curve though and I am going to add some contrast because a lot of film was contrasty so I wanna add a little bit of contrast and a lot of film the whites weren't absolutely white so I want to uh, take away some of that I don't want it to be absolutely white so we're messing around with the tone curve a little bit so bear with me a second okay that's for you know now that's really uh, just a quick way 
uh, looks okay. So we're going to go down to split toning again. And again, I mentioned I want to give this kind of a film look. So again, I will take the saturation slider and just push it all the way up. And then I will go to hue. And a lot of film look, it's kind of got kind of this little yellowish green look to it. So I'm going to move that hue slider to 50. Now, in the last image, I jumped right down to shadows and left saturation up. But I'm going to back saturation off now quite a bit until, because it's just a slight tinge is when you get this film look. It's not going to be like an absolute, you know, saturated, um, you know, yellow green on your image. It's just a little bit of a tinge. Now we're going to go down to shadows. And a lot of times um, the shadows get pushed more towards like blue and purple when you when you're using film or you know kind of a Polaroid. So again, I should I move the wrong one. I want to go to saturation and turn that all the way up so I could see it. And then I'm going to push the hue. I don't know around till I get this kind of bluish purplish look to the image, like right there. Then I'll go down to the saturation slider, and again I will back that off. So maybe around in there. And I could just mess around with them a little more. So this kind of gives it this like film look. There's a before, or you know, with split toning off, and there's split toning on. You can see it's subtle. If it's too subtle, I could come in and push saturation up a little bit more on each. Then I could go before and after. You can see it gives that little tinge, like a uh, yellow green look to the highlights and kind of a bluish purple look to the shadows. Again, if you really want to be pushing it harder, you could turn these up, the saturation on each, up more and more. And then there's before and there's after. To me that's a little bit too much. It's got to be very slight usually to, to be more realistic looking. Also, in the middle here you see there's a balance slider. And what that means is that's kind of like the point where a pixel either is a, a considered a shadow or a highlight. And if I move it all the way to the right, that means more pixels are now considered highlights. So you can see how the image turned a little more yellow-green because more of those pixels that were shadows are now highlights. If I go the other way, obviously, uh, more pixels are considered now shadows. So you're moving that uh, point of where a pixel is either going to be a highlight or a shadow towards shadows. So we're getting uh, a lot more of this like uh, bluish purple look uh, to the image. So what you could do too is you could slide this around and try to get the optimum balance of you know the two uh, hues that you dialed in and get it in your image. And I kind of like it right there. So there's before and there's after. You can see it's just a little subtle effect and that's usually how we mess around with split toning to get these subtle color shifts, uh, these little effects uh, to the image. And um, that's really it. There's not a lot to do, a lot to do with split toning. It's really just giving your image a little bit of a tone. I remember when I first started out with Lightroom. I thought I could take a, like a silhouette and I had this really interesting shot of a statue against a open sky and it was a silhouette and I thought I could make that and the sky of course was blown out so I thought I could have the sky in highlights and I could make it like a f deep red and you know have everything else um, you know as a uh, silhouette against this deep red sky. Well you really can't um, I mean, you mess around, you can kind of get it there, but it's it's more toning. It's just going to give you a little bit of a, a tinge of the color. You're not actually painting with a paintbrush. So something to experiment with, and you might find a look that you like, and you know you could remember it and use it on other images. So that's it for episode seven. And as I mentioned, the next two episodes, I'll be processing a lot of different images. So I had questions, uh, when you're going to do macros, when you're going to do, um, you know, uh, you know, stuff with camera calibration, you're going to do stuff with the lens corrections and 
you know, on and on. And uh, radio filter. I'm I'm gonna in these next two videos, I'll be covering everything else pretty much, and you'll see me do all these different types of processes uh, that I haven't covered yet, and I'm gonna reinforce the ones that I already did cover. So. I'd like to thank everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. If you have time and you haven't already, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, if you like and share the videos. That would be awesome. All right. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you guys soon.